This bite-sized video from the Fairfax County Public Libraries will show you the basics of downloading and setting up Zoom teleconference software on a Windows 10 PC. There are four basic things you'll need. First is a strong, stable internet connection. Second is a personal computer, either a laptop or a desktop, with Windows 10 installed as your operating system. Third and fourth, you'll need both a web camera and a microphone. Many PCs today have them built in. But if yours does not, you can use an external one that plugs in through the USB slot. So at this point, you should have all your hardware set up, your camera and microphone ready to go, and your computer up and running. And we're going to start at Zoom's own website to get going. Their website is pretty straightforward. It's just zoom.us. So that's Z-O-O-M dot U-S. When you first look at their site, you'll see a lot of links about how Zoom works, pricing plans, how to make a free account, things like that. But if you're interested in joining a meeting that somebody else has made, you don't have to do any of that. If you look across the top, towards the right hand side, there's a link that says quite simply, join a meeting. So you click that and we're taking it to a page that quite simply says, join a meeting. And it's asking for a meeting ID or personal link name. So typically if someone else has set up the meeting, they would have sent you a code or a link. If you have a direct link, it'll take you to the site right away to log in. If they've given you the number, all you would have to do is type that in here, which is what I'm going to do at this point. And after you type in the number, you click join. And at this point, the browser is trying to figure out what you want and what's needed. And depending on what browser you're doing, it might do things automatically for you, or it may not. In my case, I'm getting a pop-up telling me that I'll need a new app to open this Zoom meeting. So I'm going to click there and click where it says download and run Zoom. I get a pop-up at the bottom of my screen asking me what I want to do with this file. It gives me the options between run, save, or cancel. I'm going to click run. Start to downloading the file. Once it finishes, it prompts us to put in a name. This is your screen name. So this is the name that other people in the meeting room will see and will know you by. So you might think about what kind of group th this is going to be. Right below where you put in your name, you see an option where it says, remember my name for future meetings. I'm going to uncheck that for right now and then click join meeting. Now we're seeing a live feed of my webcam. This is what other people in the room will see about me. This is kind of a good last check to look around, think about what's behind you, what the lighting's like, what you look like, it, keeping in mind that this is what other people are going to see in the room when they look at you. When you're talking, they're going to see this. Is this what you want? Is this the image you want to portray? So think about that before you click the join. If you're okay with everything, you'll notice right below your own image, it says always show video preview dialogue when joining a video meeting. In general, I recommend keeping that because this again is a last check for you right before you go live into a class or a meeting. And when you're ready, you click join with video. Now it's trying to configure your audio settings. And in general, you're going to pick join with computer audio. I'm going to select that. And we now see my coworker who I'm ready to have a conference call with, my friendly library monkey, who is ready to talk to me about library stuff. And now we can go ahead and, and show you a little bit around the screen and what some of our options are. First thing I'm going to do towards the top right, right below the X that would kill the application, there's an icon that looks like a little square inside a circle. That's going to put us into full screen mode. So it spreads out the application across the entire screen and gives you better real estate. And notice that shifts my picture over to the right. There are also some other viewing options. If you look here right now, we're in what's called the speaker view. So typically that means whoever is talking is going to be the main picture here. In this case, our friendly library monkey. And then you would, would be over here on the right to always get a sense of what you look like. There is a, a different view that you can use, which is called gallery view. If there are just two of you, it's going to put you side by side. If you add a third, it's going to put them in four or five. And up to a certain point, it won't show everyone in the room. So depending on how many people you have in your group, this may or may not be a useful option for you. I'm going to go back to speaker view for right now. If you look down across the bottom, there are a number of other settings here. One of the most important ones to keep in mind is your mute button right here. So if you click that, you'll see there's a little cross out through it saying 
letting you know that the sound is now off. You also get a notification directly across the screen. And on your own video feed, it tells you that there's a little cross out signal next by the microphone, letting everybody in the room know that you've turned off your microphone. Right next to that is a stop video function. So if I click that, notice my image goes away. Why would I want to do that? Well, maybe you have to step away for a minute. Maybe you spill a drink and need to clean it up. Once everything is back to normal, you can turn your video back on and everything's back the way it was. You'll notice right next to the microphone and right next to the stop video, there are little carrots. Those are extra settings there. So if I select that for the microphone, for example, it gives me a number of options. I actually have two microphones here. I've got one built into the laptop I'm using, and I also have an external one. So if I wanted to, I could switch over to a different microphone. And it gives you options to test, to leave computer audio, and fine-tune the settings a little bit if you wanted to. Also, right next to the Stop Video button, you see a carrot there, which gives you options for changing your camera and configuring your video settings. Right now, I'm using an external video camera. If I wanted to switch to the one built into the laptop, I can do that and I'll switch over. Notice the angle is a little different. One thing with video conferencing software, sometimes people will plug in an external camera and not realize that they have one that's built in. So if you are getting a view and trying to adjust things and don't realize maybe that you have one built in, take a look there. You may have two cameras and you don't actually realize it. I'm going to switch back to the other camera. It's actually like this angle a little bit better for what we're doing today. If you keep going across the, the bottom, you'll notice there is a field that says participants. If I select that, it tells me everybody who's in the room, or at least the name that they've chosen to give. And you also have the option to invite people if the room owner has given you that ability. And it tells you who's muted and who's not. There's a chat function. If I click on that, it opens up a new window. I'm going to move that over to the side. What that's for, it's a text chat. So I type that in and then everybody in the room will be able to see what you're typing in. It's a good option if your microphone is muted. Maybe this is a more formal presentation or meeting and somebody is leading a discussion, everybody else's microphones are off, but you might have questions. It's a way of communicating without using audio and can be very useful depending on the setting. There's a share screen function, which particularly if you're doing presentations can be very useful. There's a record option. And last but not least, reactions. So if somebody makes a great point in your book club, you can click that and applause or thumbs up. And notice by my clicking that, it shows up directly on my video feed right here so everybody knows that I'm excited by that point that was just made. Lastly, you've enjoyed your meeting. You are ready to go. How do you get out of this? Well, you're gonna to look towards the bottom right of the screen and when you put your cursor over there, you'll see it says leave meeting. Click that, you get a pop-up that says, do you want to leave this meeting? Just in case you clicked it by accident. And then you click leave and you're done. That's the basics for using Zoom software. And I hope you find this helpful, whether you're going to use it to attend a virtual library program or a book club or just meeting up with some friends in a different way. I think this should give you some basics to at least get started. Thanks for watching.